Are you guys ready for the next couple chapters in The Story of Dr. Doolittle by Hugh Lofting? Thanks for joining us today. We're here at the Caribou Public Library in Caribou, Maine. I'm Miss Erin, and we are reading for our chapter book story time. So, we have the ninth chapter called The Monkey's Council. <laughs> here is a picture to start with. This is the G, <laughs> or C, excuse me, that's a C. And then over here we have a picture of, hmm, what is that? The Grand Gorilla. All right. All right, let's see what happens. Chi Chi stood outside the doctor's door, keeping everybody away until he woke up, right? He slept for three days <laughs> after working so hard all week, helping the monkeys get better. Then John Doolittle told the monkeys that he must now go back to Puddleby. They were all very surprised at this for they had thought that he was going to stay with them forever. That night, all the monkeys got together in the jungle to talk it over. The chief chimpanzee rose up and said, why is it the good man is going away? Is he not happy here with us? But none of them could answer him. Then the grand gorilla got up and said, I think we should all go to him and ask him to stay. Perhaps if we make him a new house and a bigger bed, promise him plenty of monkey servants to work for him and to make life pleasant for him, perhaps then he will not wish to go. Then Chi-Chi got up and all the others whispered, Shh, look, Chi-Chi, the great traveler is about to speak. And Chi-Chi said to the other monkeys, My friends, I am afraid it is useless to ask the doctor to stay. He owes money in Puddleby and he says he must go back and pay it. And the monkeys asked him, what is money? Then Chi Chi told them that in their country, you could get nothing without money. You could do nothing without money. That it was almost impossible to live without money. Some of them asked, but can you not even eat and drink without paying? But Chi Chi shook his head. And then he told them that even he, when he was with the organ grinder, had been made to ask the children for money. And the chief chimpanzee turned to the oldest orangutan and said, Cousin, surely these men be strange creatures who would wish to live in such a land. My gracious, how paltry. Then Chi Chi said, When we were coming to you, we had no boat to cross the sea in and no money to buy food to eat on our journey. So a man lent us some biscuits and we said that we would pay him when we came back. And we borrowed a boat from a sailor, but it was broken on the rocks when we reached the shores of Africa. Now the doctor says he must go back and get the sailor another boat because the man was poor and his ship was all he had. And the monkeys were all silent for a while, still quiet or quite still upon the ground and thinking hard. At last, the biggest baboon got up and said, I do not think we ought to let this good man leave our land until we have given him a fine present to take with him so that he may know we are grateful for all he has done for us. And a little tiny red monkey who was sitting up in the tree shouted down, I think that too. And they all cried out, making a great noise. Yes, yes, let's give him a fine present ever, the finest present ever. Now they began to wonder and ask one another what would be the best thing to give him. One said, 50 bags of coconuts. And another, a hundred bunches of bananas. At least he should not have to buy his fruit in the land where you pay to eat. But Chi Chi told them that all these things would be too heavy to carry so far and would go bad before half was eaten. If you want to please him, <clears throat> he said, give him an animal. You may sure he will be kind to it. Give him some rare animal that they have not got in the menageries. And the, the menagerie is like a zoo. And the monkeys asked him, oh, what are menageries? Then Chi Chi explained to them that the menageries were places in the land of the Europeans where animals were put in cages for people to come and to look at. And the monkeys were very shocked and said to one another, these men are like thoughtless young ones, stupid and easily amused. It is a prison he means. So then they asked Chi Chi what rare animal it could be that they should give the doctor, one his countrymen had not seen before. And the major of the marmosets asked, have they an iguana over there? But Chi Chi said, yes, there is one in the London Zoo. And another asked, have they an okapi? But Chi Chi said, yes, in Belgium, 
where my organ grinder took me five years ago. They had no copy in a big city they call Antwerp. Another asked, have they a push me pull you? Then Chi Chi said, no, no foreign man has ever seen a push me pull you. Let's give him that. Push me pull you. <laughs> Chapter 10 is called the rarest animal of all. Hmm. Here is a picture in the shape of a pea. <laughs> Push me pull yous are now extinct. That means they aren't anymore. But long ago, when Dr. Doolittle was alive, there were some of them still left in the deepest jungles of Africa. And even then, they were very, very scarce. They had no tail, but a head at each end and sharp horns on each head. They were very shy and terribly hard to catch. The Africans get most of their animals by sneaking up behind them while they are not looking but you could not do this while the push, with the push me pull you because no matter which way you came toward him, he was always facing you. And besides, only one half of him slept at a time. The other head was always awake and watching. This was why they were never many caught and never seen in any zoos. Though many of the greatest huntsmen and the cleverest zookeepers spent years of their lives searching through the jungles in all weather for push me pull yous. Not a single one had ever been caught. Even then, years ago, he was the only animal in the world with two heads. Well, the monkeys set out hunting for this animal through the forest. And after they had gone a good many miles, one of them found peculiar footprints near the edge of a river. And they knew that a push me pull you must be very near that spot. Then they went along the bank of the river a little way, and they saw a place where the grass was high and thick, and they guessed that he was in there. So they all joined hands and made a great circle around the high grass. The push me pull you heard them coming and he tried hard to break through the ring of monkeys, but he couldn't do it. When he saw that it was no use trying to escape, he sat down and waited to see what they wanted. They asked him if he would go with Dr. Doolittle to be put on show, but he shook both his heads hard <clears throat> and he said, certainly not. They explained to him that he would not be shut up in a menagerie, but would just be looked at. Then they told him that the doctor was a very kind man, but hadn't any money, and people would pay to see a two-headed animal, and the doctor would get rich and could pay for the boat that he had borrowed to come to Africa in. But he answered, no, you know how shy I am. I hate to be stared at, and he almost began to cry. Then for three days, they tried to persuade him and at the end of the third day, he said he would come with them and see what kind of a man the doctor was first. So the monkeys traveled back with the push me pull you. And when they came to where the doctor's little house of grass was, they knocked on the door. The duck who was packing the trunk said, come in. And Chi Chi very proudly took the animal inside and showed him to the doctor. What in the world is it? Asked John Doolittle gazing at the strange creature. Lord save us, cried the duck. How does it make up its mind? It doesn't look to me as though it had any, said Jip the dog. <laughs> Here they are looking at the push me pull you in the grass hut. Oh dear. This doctor, said Chi Chi, is the, pun is the push me pull you, the rarest animal of the African jungles, the only two headed beast in the world. Take him home with you and your future's your fortune is made. People will pay any money to see him. But I don't want any money, said the doctor. Yes, you do, said Dab Dab the duck. Don't you remember how we had to pinch and scrape to pay the butcher's bill in Puddleby? And how are you going to get the sailor the new boat you spoke of, unless we have the money to buy it? I was going to make him one, said the doctor. Oh, do be sensible, cried Dab Dab. Where would you get all the wood and the nails to make one with? Besides, what are we going to live on? We shall be poorer than ever when we get back. Chi-Chi's perfectly right. Take the funny looking thing along, do. Well, perhaps there is something in what you say, murmured the doctor. It would certainly make a nice new kind of pet, but does, er, what do you call it, really want to go abroad? Yes, I'll go, said the push me pull you, who saw at once from the doctor's face that he was a man who could be trusted. 
You have been so kind to the animals here, and the monkeys tell me that I am the only one who will do. But you must promise me that if, you do, if I do not like it in your country, that you will send me back. Why, certainly, of course, of course, said the doctor. Excuse me, surely you are related to the deer family, are you not? Yes, said the push me pull you, to the Ab Abyssinian gazelles and the Asiatic chamois on my mother's side. My father's great-great-grandfather was the last of the unicorns. Most interesting, murmured the doctor, and he took a book out of the trunk, which Dab-Dab was packing, and began turning the pages. Let me see if Buffin says anything. I notice, said the duck, that you talk with only one of your mouths. Can't the other head talk as well? Oh, yes, said the push me pull you, but I keep the other mouth from for eating, mostly. In that way, I can talk while I'm eating without being rude. Our people have always been very polite. When the packing was finished and everything was ready to start, the monkeys gave a grand party for the doctor, and all the animals of the jungle came. They had pineapples and mangoes and honey and all sorts of good things to eat and to drink. After they had all finished eating, the doctor got up and said, My friends, I am not clever at speaking long words after dinner, like some men, and I have just eaten many fruits and much honey. But I wish to tell you that I am very sad at leaving your beautiful country. Because I have things to do in the land of the Europeans, I must go. After I have gone, remember never to let the flies settle on your food before you eat it, and do not sleep on the ground when it rains, when the rains are coming. Um, eh, I hope you will all live happily ever after. And the doctor stopped speaking and sat down. All the monkeys clapped their hands a long time and said to one another, let it be remembered always among our people that he sat and ate with us here under the trees, for surely he is the greatest man of men. And the, gr the grand gorilla, who had the strength of seven horses in his hairy arms, rolled a great rock up to the head of the table and said, This stone for all time shall mark the spot. And even to this day in the heart of the jungle, that stone still is there. And monkey mothers passing through the forest with their families still point down at it from the branches and whisper to their children, Shh, there it is. Look where the good doctor sat and ate food with us in the year of the great sickness. Then when the party was over, the doctor and his pets started out to go back to the seashore. And all of the monkeys went with him as far as the edge of their country, carrying his trunk and bags to see him off. Well, that's all the reading for today. We will continue on next time. Hope you guys all enjoyed it. We'll see you then. Bye.